Day two, St. Louis's influence on the church. There's a story from St. Louis de Munford's life that particularly expresses his passion, which we pondered just yesterday. In the town of Pontichu, St. Louis inspired the peasants to build a huge monument of the Passion of Christ on a neighboring hill. For 15 months, hundreds of peasants volunteered their skills and labor to build it. When completed, it stood as a massive structure, a real labor of love. And on the day before it was supposed to be dedicated by the bishop, word got back to Louis that his enemies had convinced the government to destroy it. They had lied to the authorities, saying that the structure was actually meant to be a fortress against the government. When Louis received this disappointing news, he told the thousands of people who had gathered for the blessing ceremony we had hoped to build a Calvary here. Let us build it in our hearts. Blessed be God. One thing about doing the Lord's work, it doesn't always turn out according to our plans. For example, St. Louis surely had planned that his monument to Christ would last more than a day. Yet, the saint obediently accepted the destruction of his plans and blessed God. Because of this kind of detachment from his own will and attachment to God's will, Lewis became an instrument used by God to accomplish even mightier works. So, although his physical monument was destroyed, Lewis's teaching eventually became a huge edifice in the church that exercised great influence on many popes and on Catholic spirituality. Indeed, de Montfort's passionate labors paid off in the end, even if he didn't see the fruit himself. As we are just beginning our preparation for consecration to Jesus through Mary, let's ponder some of the support various popes have given to St. Louis's teaching. May the testimony of their support strengthen our resolve to journey on to consecration day. And may it help us to trust that our consecration truly will bear great fruit in our lives, even if we don't yet fully understand how. Blessed Pope Pius IX stated that St. Louis's devotion to Mary is the best and most acceptable form. Pope Leo XIII not only beatified de Montfort in 1888, but granted a church indulgence to Catholics who consecrated themselves to Mary using de Montfort's formula. Moreover, this Pope was reportedly so influenced by St. Louis's efforts to spread the rosary that he wrote 11 encyclicals on this preeminent Marian devotion. Pope St. Pius X, like Leo XIII, also recommended de Montfort's teaching on Mary to the faithful. In fact, he granted a plenary indulgence in perpetuum to anyone who would pray de Montfort's formula for Marian consecration and he offered his own apostolic blessing to anyone who would simply read true devotion. This Pope so strongly encouraged the faithful to follow de Montfort's path of Marian devotion because he himself had experienced its power. In fact, in his Marian encyclical, Ad Diem Illum, the saintly Pope expressed his own dependence on de Montfort in writing it which becomes obvious when one compares it with true devotion. The Pope's encyclical continually reflects the tone and spirit of de Montfort's classic work as evidenced by sentences like this. There is no surer or easier way than Mary in uniting all men with Christ. Pope Pius XI simply stated, I have practiced this devotion ever since my youth. Venerable Pope Pius XII canonized St. Louis in 1947, and in his homily for the Mass of Canonization, referred to Date Montfort's Marian teaching as solid and right. Then, when the Pope addressed the pilgrims who had come for the canonization, he said that Date Montfort leads us to Mary and from Mary to Jesus, thus summarizing the meaning of Marian consecration. Pope St. John Paul II promoted de Montfort's teaching more than any other pope. We'll learn more about this during the fourth week of the retreat. 
It's enough here to recall two amazing facts. First, that John Paul's papal motto was totus tus, which means totally yours, which he took directly from de Montfort's shorter prayer of consecration. Second, that John Paul described his reading of true devotion to Mary as a decisive turning point in his life. Today's prayer. Come Holy Spirit living in Mary, prepare me to give myself fully to living out this true and solid devotion.